Hello, everybody. I'm Mike Greenley. Welcome to Tradition Mortgages podcast. Today, we have a yet another special guest. And alongside me, uh, as usual, is Eric Hendrickson, president of Tradition Mortgage. And uh, Eric, thanks for joining me once again. Um, you've had a relationship here, Tradition Mortgage, with Esquire Title. It's a partnership. And it has served you very well, especially over this crazy last year. Can you kind of, you know, give me a little bit of background and and just tell everybody how that kind of developed and, and the reason why you, you saw that this was going to be a, a necessary item for you guys? Yeah, you bet. Thanks, Mike. Great to be back again. Yeah, as, re- as regarding uh, Esquire Title, they're our affiliated title company. And really the synergies created by working closely with Tradition Mortgage, you know, it's, it's been a tremendous, tremendous, you know, uh, competitive advantage for us to be able to make that experience for the client. Uh, the mortgage experience is, is complicated enough, but to be able to take a few links of the chain out for a client, since there's that close communication between Tradition Mortgage and Esquire, it's just to me that, you know, creates that experience that people remember and hopefully brings them back to us again and again. And, and really for us, um, that was the whole idea, you know, the vertical great integration behind forming a title company is just is just to make it easier uh, for the client, you know, one one less point of contact. But we've been blessed that the staff of Esquire, you know, they've just been superheroes. And certainly our, our guest here, Lynn Stander, uh, who runs Esquire Title, you know, without her, we wouldn't be able to to make it all happen. And it's been, you know, the, the level of volume this past year has just been tremendous. Well, uh, no further ado, Lynn Stander. Thank you for for joining us. Uh, Lynn's a partner and and closing manager for Esquire Title. Uh, she is uh, well. If you've ever if you ever have a chance to see her work, it's like a whirlwind. It's unbelievable. And uh, Lynn, thanks for joining us. Um, you know what? For those people that don't get to see all the action that is a title company. A lot of people would ask, well, what is a title? What What is title? Why do we need it? What's the purpose behind it? And maybe you can give us a kind of a, a layman's o- overview for the people that don't really understand that part of the mortgage industry. Okay. Well, thank you, Mike. And thanks, Eric. Um, happy to be here as well. Um, well. I've been doing title for a very, very long time. I will not give a date on it because that would <laughs> certainly age me. And But um, I've been... Uh, kind of involved with Tradition Mortgage for 20 years it has been. So anyways, um, it is crazy. But title insurance, it's like it kind of gets in your blood and then you just don't ever do anything different. And that's how it's been with me. But for title, it's like it's protecting the ownership and the um, your property against any title defects or liens that may arise during the process of owning your home. And that could be anything from undisclosed property taxes, it could be um, bad recordings, it could be uh, accidental recordings by, you know, something getting recorded on your property in error by another title company or a recorder's office, um, utility easements that aren't a record, just a number of things that may cause issues with your title policy. And so if you don't have an owner's policy, let me back up just a moment. If you are putting a loan on your property, a mortgage, automatically the lender requires title insurance. So a lender needs to be covered. They need that protection against any title defects that may come up. Um, it also could be um, tax liens and it could be mechanics liens that builders throw on um, 120 days prior to a mortgage being put on. So there's those protective things that we put in place for the lender. However, for an owner, which is something that I can't believe that anybody would ever do, but a lot of people opt out of getting an owner's policy. But that protects the owner, one of their largest investments in their whole entire life against any of these title defects. And we've seen it happen. And if you don't have an owner's policy, you have to hire an attorney to take care of any of those any of those title issues that may show up on your title. Yep. So yeah. it's like rolling the dice if you if you opt yeah. out, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it really it's it's again it's it's not something that's front and center when people are looking at purchasing a home or owning a home. But I tell you what, when those uh, I call them kind of hairballs. When those come up, when you're trying to refinance and get a lower rate, or when you want to sell your house and buy another house, and all of a sudden the title search comes back, and they're like, "Hey, what are these items on there?" And then you see people's eyes get as big as silver dollars. Like, what the heck is that stuff? 
that's on there, especially if somebody's owned their home for 25 years and they've taken out home equity lines and paid them off and they've refinanced, but along the way, one of those loans, a satisfaction didn't get filed and all of a sudden now, the, even though the loan's paid off, maybe the bank was sold or maybe it's been sold two or three times and now they're tracking down who can we even talk to mm -hmm. about trying to get a satisfaction. So, I mean, if it's an existing bank and you call them up, okay, it still slows down the, the process, but if it's a bank that doesn't exist anymore, you know, it can really be challenging and you might, you know, be up a, against the, uh, you know, timelines or up against a gun. So it's it's just, again, title, understanding that title ownership, that chain of title on your house is super important, but it's probably the least understood of all the pieces that go into to real estate and mm -hmm. financing real estate. So again, it's, it's really important that you slow down and understand what you're doing. Certainly an owner's policy, just kind of like a you know, homeowner's insurance policy, if there's a big storm and your house is, is really damaged, you know, you'd be glad you have it. Yep. And one thing with an owner's policy, you pay for it one time for as long as you own the property. And that's one thing that people don't understand. It's like, you know, the insurance is there for a reason. And a homeowner's insurance policy, you're paying for that thing every single month. And then you have a couple of claims on that, and they're ditching you and going someplace else and, and saying, you know, sorry, we can't cover you anymore. But one thing I want to touch on, too, as far as what title does, uh, when you said finding satisfactions or whatever, you know, shows up on title, the team that I have got are so amazing that they they know exactly where to go to dig to find that information because a lot of customers are like, they throw their hands up, they don't know. And so, you know, we do the due diligence to find out where do we get that sat from. If this bank is closed, who do we go to to get the information? You know, if somebody can't find an owner's policy and the title company that they had closed with before is closed, who, how do we find out who has that owner's policy? And so it's also working with a really great relationship with our underwriter, knowing that we can go to them and say, hey guys, what can you do to help us? Because number one, our underwriter doesn't want to claim, which we haven't had any claims since I've been here, which is awesome. Um, but it's it's also helping us find out where we can go to get that information so we can give our customers and our lenders clear title. So uh, when you start to dig into the process, whether it's a uh, mortgage or whether it's title, obviously everything appears convoluted to, to anyone from the outside and maybe even some of the people on the inside. So the challenge for both of you is how do we streamline our industry? How do we streamline things so that make to make it easier? And I know that Tradition Mortgage has made those types of efforts and of course that reflects also on title, Esquire title. So I'd like you both to kind of talk a little bit about um, the process of trying to streamline and make things efficient and make things quicker and easier so that people, first of all, understand it better, but also have an easier process from start to finish. Sure, I'll, t I'll, take, I'll take the first crack take at that. <laughs> yes, you bet. So there's been some changes in the, in the financing realm as far as the disclosures, the, you know, kind of the, the initial disclosure piece that um, was modified not too many years ago, the TRID laws. Till the rest of initial disclosures, there's what's known as a loan estimate and also what's known as a closing disclosure mm -hmm. that needs to be consummated three days prior to a real estate transaction. And it really has tried to spell out all of the fees and it holds the lender ultimately accountable for being accurate as far as the fees that are disclosed. And also that relates to making sure you're disclosing your lender fees and your title fees mm -hmm. collect correctly as well too, especially if you're affiliated with each other like Esquire and Tradition Mortgage are. So I think that those documents, again, you know, the, the intention of the government is to try to make that more clear to an individual borrower, but unfortunately what it does a lot of cases is just you're blinded by a million documents and you just your eyes kind of glaze over. So again, it it is a, is a little bit hard for people to kind of, at the end of the day, make sense of it all because they just want to get to the finish line, right? So we try to slow people down, walk them through the actual fees. You know, as a title industry, we've we've done a good job, I think, of bundling the fee structure more versus having 10,000 small fees. Now there's just a handful of, of larger fees that, you know, are a little bit easier to explain. But there's just several different parties involved in a real estate, you know, financing transaction. So there's only so simple you can make it. Right. I think the important thing is slow down, be willing to listen to your traditional mortgage loan officer, listen to your Esquire title uh, closing agent as they explain things, because I think that that's what we can really bring to the table with our experience 
is the understanding. We understand it, and if you just will allow us to kind of walk you through it, I think you're gonna walk away from the transaction when it's completed, feeling pretty good about things, feeling like not only did you get a really good deal, but you also are a little more educated on the whole how, how the whole process works. Yeah. Absolutely, so Lynn, uh, I guess same, same type of question. Uh, how can you make the process, I mean, and Eric said that, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a deep process, mm -hmm. so you can only make it so streamlined and so simple, but what are you guys uh, doing or looking at that, that helps in that, okay. that nature? Um, well, the one thing, technology has really, yeah. really created a huge portal into the streamlining process. Um, the e-sign documents has, has severely decreased the amount of time that people are actually sitting in the yeah, closing room. They're sure. able to view the documents online. Now you've got, you know, some people that are just technology illiterate and they don't want to have anything to do with it and so the signing process takes a little bit longer and a little bit more explaining which you know we're happy to do because the customers come first but as far as streamlining it getting it down to the to you know having the majority of the files as e-signing is is huge um, the one thing that isn't able to be streamlined quite so much as doing a purchase transaction so refis are easy you can do those all day long um, unless they're in a trust or an estate or something like that. But um, as far as the purchase transactions, I'm not sure that there's really any way right now to streamline them any differently than what we're doing. Um, you know, being able to print documents and upload them into a portal is, is different than how we were doing it even a year ago. And compared to 10 years ago, how things were, we were doing settlement statements, we were doing everything, you know, all right there, nothing was, was the technology just wasn't there. So embracing technology is really what's going to help streamline everything for everybody, I think. Yeah, and I would say that one result of the pandemic yes. is the, this, you know, positive one positive thing among <laughs> lots of negative things yes. is the movement towards e-signing, basically the ability to sign many of the documents electronically, whether that's on your iPhone or iPad or your desktop computer, mm -hmm. just really a lot of push you know, out of necessity, initially, you know, keeping people safe, trying to reduce or even potentially eliminate in-person closing. So that kind of, I would say, pushed us ahead probably maybe 12 to 24 months of where we otherwise would have been kind of organically or naturally if we wouldn't have had the, the COVID pandemic. So that, that part, so that was one good result and people are more comfortable with that technology where maybe like Lynn was saying, the you know generation of people that are a little more technology adverse, they were kind of forced into the technology side of things out of necessity in several areas because yes. of the pandemic. So people not only appreciate the e-signing capability, they really expect it. So for us, we wanna make sure to be able to deliver on that. And I would say the next 12 to 24 months, you know, being able to actually do online notaries, that's one thing, you know, that, that notary, uh, function where you're having to witness somebody's signature and verify their identity. That's still a little clunky to do electronically, but that'll be something to watch for in the next, yeah. you know, 12 to 24 months to really see that piece of it being um, more mainstream. So that'll that'll be huge. That'll be a that'll be a big time game changer. Yeah. So in this past year, and I know Eric, I know I've talked to you about this plenty of times. Um, I guess. You know the, how the old the old adage is. It, you know you don't know what your capacity is until you've actually reached it, mm -hmm. and maybe even stepped over that line and looked back and say, maybe we should be back there. So this past year, you guys definitely tested your capacity, the pipeline, if you want to call it that. And Lynn, I know from being up there plenty of times, you guys tested it too. But how yeah. how happy were you that that you looked at? The, the the flow of of, uh, of things coming through the mortgage company and knew that it, that it could be handled on the other end because you know everyone has a certain amount of capacity and and during this pandemic I think a lot of people tested that yes I mean the the, the amount of loan closings that were done I mean tradition mortgage you know over six thousand transactions Esquire you know four thousand it's it's there's a massive numbers in in, in you know Esquire title as a, as an agent for First American you know being the largest uh, producer, you know, in really the Midwest for that matter. And really with those numbers, transaction numbers, not a huge staff. So that just shows you the experience yeah, and efficiency. Yeah. But for us, traditional mortgage, there's no way 
we could have even come anywhere close to the closings we had if we wouldn't have that tremendously close relationship with Esquire and the ability to kind of just bounce back and forth with each other, that familiarity, quite, quite frankly, that trust mm -hmm. uh, between parties. So that, that was absolutely huge. And again, it, it, uh, above everything else that we have and that we've worked hard to build at Tradition Mortgage, the relationship with Esquire is certainly the largest competitive advantage we possess absolutely. when competing out there in the marketplace for people's home loans. And, and Lynn, I, you know, during, during when things were really crazy, obviously, you guys had to deal with the fact that, oh, well, we have to, I mean, yeah, technology is great, but there are portions of this that have to be done with people in the room. So you guys had to make big adjustments. You had some people out of the office, yes. and then you had to make adjustments because people actually physically had to walk in and do and, and, and finish signing and and you had to notarize stuff. So, I mean, it's not like you could have just said, oh, sorry, at the pandemic, we can just go straight digital. Well, it doesn't work like that. Not at all. And it still doesn't work like that. Um, you know, as far as when it all hit, you know, there was there was like a split second that all of a sudden the world changed. Mm -hmm. And I had staff members that had to work from home. It was, you know, getting our IT group together so that they could rally and, and get people set up to work at home. It was dealing with a very, very minimal staff at the office, which we've hired more people now, but at the time when, they, when it hit, we were de dealing with just even five people less than what we have right now and still doing record number of closings and everything else. And it was like, you know, you, you had to read the people when they walked in the room and how comfortable were they were they walking in the room and making sure everything was sanitized. And each particular closing took a little bit more time and a little bit more effort to make sure that, you know, not only were we protecting ourselves, but protecting the people coming in and my staff and making sure everybody stayed healthy. And knock on wood, we, we have stayed healthy, but it's, you know, you, it, it, was, it, it was trying in a way that I never thought that we would be able to survive going through stuff like that. But we had all the right people in place yeah, and everybody never. just did what they need to do to get it done. You guys were warriors. I mean, just that the, the sanitizing and cleaning and the safety shields being up and yeah. disposable pens and like all these things you'd never dream yeah. in a million years you'd need to, to uh, be dealing with in addition to just trying to knock down a record level of, <laughs> of closing. So you got to do it in a way that, that is safe and sound and keeping people... Uh, you know, protected at all times. So, you know, just that adaptability that yeah. your team showed was really amazing. Yeah, so proud. You really don't know what you have as far as like, <laughs> you know, skill sets until you really get yeah. tested um, by s some really challenging situations and being able to rise yeah. above and the feedback from clients, you know, the professionalism and how you got them in and out of there and, and, and did it in a way that wasn't rushed, but, you know, was efficient. Just it was really stressful. Impressive. I'm going to it. It was very stressful, but no you know, question. it was it was we did it, and so you know, and again, it, it's the partnership with tradition that we wouldn't be where we were with the numbers without everything that we got from you guys too. So it's it's a it's huge. No, it's a big relationship, big success story. So we're Absolutely. looking looking forward to the future. Yeah, that's for well, sure. It's definitely been a know. feather in both of your caps, and the, and I love watching this relationship and this partnership because it, it is really streamlined it, and that's what it's supposed to be like when you connect like that so congratulations to, to both of you for yeah. for making it easy on the clients in that regard because uh, it, when we talk about streamlining and making things efficient uh, you you got it to about as where it hit the the peak of where it could be because my goodness this past year has been crazy so yeah. Lynn, uh, thank you very much for taking time out to join us. I appreciate that. Eric, thank you once again. And, Thanks, uh, Mike. We'll talk again soon. Thanks, Thanks. guys. Appreciate it.